Hello and thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to build an indexing wheel for the spindle on my lathe. Uh, this will allow me to drill uh, hole patterns like this, a bunch of different combinations, fours, sixes, tens, even a hundred. Uh, the wheel has a hundred holes and forty-eight holes. Uh, that will allow for many different combinations. Uh, if you haven't already seen the tool post drill video, uh, be sure and watch that. Uh, with the indexing wheel and the tool post drill, I can do things like that in a lot of different combinations. So let's get on with it. Okay, I got a snug fit here. I've ground a taper on the ends because I got a, a 110 meg welder. And I want good penetration on that. Using that as a spacer. Okay, I've got the ring welded up with one spoke in there and I'm going to drill a hole in there and, and true up the outside. Uh, of course I could have made that ring smaller, it just depends on how many holes I want to put in the ring and how close together uh, they'll be. Uh, just build it according to your lathe capability. I've got a pretty good sized chuck here, at least for this lathe. So I can chuck it like that. I'm setting the ring a little bit away from my chuck jaw so I can turn all the way to it. I think I got it. Pretty good. Okay, because I'm going to bolt a mandrel onto this spoke right here, I need this surface uh, machined right here so it'll be true to the perimeter of this, this wheel. So I need to machine that right in there. Pretty good. Apparently I had that fairly true. Okay, I'm going to use a 3 8 bolt on this, so I'm going to drill it slightly under and then ream, ream the 3 8 Okay, the next step is to figure out how to put 100 holes around this dial accurately. Uh, it doesn't have to be 100 holes, it could be 50 holes, 48 holes, whatever you want. I'm, I'm planning on putting a row of 100 and a row of 48. That gives me uh, the visibles of 4 and 5 and 3, whatever I need to uh, index to. Okay, a while back uh, I made some lathe dials and I made them from a video by Tubal Cain. If you're not familiar with Tubal Cain on YouTube, look him up. He's got a wealth of information. Uh, but this is what I used as an indexing wheel to make the lathe dials. So I'm going to use this 100 tooth saw blade as an indexing dial to make 
the indexing dial. Uh, I could just use this every time I need a hundred teeth or a hundred holes to index from. Uh, but I thought I'd make it all on one one dial. And I can mark them in like fours, sixes, eights, whatever. Uh, I'm kind of you can see where I did the ten uh, every ten. There's five. This will work pretty good for making this indexing wheel. I'm not going to go into a lot of depth on how I made this. This is basically an arbor that goes through my spindle and it bolts inside the chuck. It's kind of hard to do. In fact, I'm going to have to take the chuck off. This is going to be different for every lathe. I made this little device here. Kind of crude, but it works. Clamps right there. Okay. Okay, I've got my hundred tooth saw blade set up here. It's got a ratchet system, clicker. I'll just drill a hole on each one of those on my indexing wheel. I've got it clamped to my lathe. I didn't cover this much because every lathe will be different. This is a Logan 200. This works pretty good on here, but if I had an Atlas lathe, I'd have to come up with something different. So I've got the spindle disengaged, so I'm freewheeling. And over here I've got my tool, tool post uh, drill guide set up. I've got a, a limited amount of travel there. I've got a set screw right, or I mean a locking collar on the shaft right there. I've got it set at center. Now it's got some play there, so I'm going to have to be careful not to lean on it one way or the other while I'm doing this. But I think it'll work out pretty good, but we'll see. It's going to be a long process. Well, that's it. Took me about 15, 15 minutes, I guess. That's not too bad. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, oil. Use oil. That speeds things up a lot. Uh, more oil, the better, really. Looks pretty even to me, though. Okay, that's the 100 holes. Now to do the 48 holes. Okay, now I've got to come up with 48 holes. So let's see here. Right there. Forty-eight holes. Well, there you go. My uh, Logan change gear, the forty-eight tooth uh, change gear, just happened to fit on the same arbor I made for the saw blade. And I, I just moved the clicker 
put a little little thicker sheet metal, put a little higher up. That's going to work perfect. That's my 48 holes. Okay, uh, unlock my carriage. Make a new row. I'm going to make it far enough over to where I got room to make lines in there for uh, fives, tens, right whatever. Of course, there's a hundred different ways you could do this. This is just one way. Okay. I got around to the hole I started on and I was about one hole diameter off. I had something slip. So I'm going to drill a new set of holes. I've tightened everything up. I'm not sure exactly where it slipped. Either my gear slipped on the shaft or the mandrel slipped on the spindle. So we'll see. We'll give her one more try here and see what happens. Well, everything's dead on now. I, d I didn't have any slippage on that one. What I'll probably do is trim that off right there. Just make a narrower disc. Well, I've reached the limitations of my lathe. I can't get a cutoff tool in there, so I'm just going to have to... Erase those holes. Okay, what I want to do is mount that right there, but instead of having an arbor that bolts in through the chuck, I want to have an expanding arbor on the outfeed here. So I need it about two inches so it'll clear this. Okay, I've got about two inches hanging out of the chuck here, and this is 875 in diameter, 875 thousandths. The inside of my spindle is 775. I want to turn that down to 775, so I need to take a hundred thousandths off. Uh, this will be my arbor inside the uh, spindle. Seven seventy-seven. About two thousandths more to take taken off. Pretty good fit. I'll make that an expanding arbor, and that'll that'll hold the uh, indexing wheel right there. Okay, I need to drill a uh, three-eighths hole all the way through this. Okay, this is just a little over three quarter for the bore of my spindle. And I'm going to go to 7 16, say in about an inch and a half. Okay, I've got my compound set at about 10 degrees. And I'm going to cut an inside taper on that. Okay, I got about a, uh, what did I say, 10 degree? A yeah, 10 degree taper on that. Uh, probably needs to be a little smoother than that.
I'll smooth that out. Yeah, it's a little smoother. It's not perfect. Smooth enough though. Looks like that's about three quarter inches deep. About right. Now I want to cut a matching taper. So that fits right in there. So I gotta set this at 10 degrees on the other side. Needs to be a little smaller. That'll probably get I gotta thread that for three eighths. I'm gonna have to cut the end off a little bit. Okay, I got this threaded, and now I'm going to cut it off. Slow it down a little bit. Okay, I don't have a bolt the right size, so I need a hex head. Uh, but there's how it works. It's got a uh, tapered nut, it's like a concrete anchor. Pulls into there, expands this. I'm going to have to cut this right there and right there. I don't have a bandsaw. Probably going to make it look ugly, but it doesn't really matter. It just needs to expand inside the spindle. Yeah, a little ugly, but it'll work. It'll expand now. Well, there's my saw cuts. Not real pretty, but it'll work good. Uh, I'm going to try it with a carriage bolt and just tighten that nut. 
it'll probably be better anyway because it'll pull straight back on that nut instead of trying to rotate it. There you go. Put it in back gear. Yep, pretty firm. All you have to do to take it out, loosen that, or it won't come out yet. Just tap the end. There you go. Worked perfect. Next step will be to uh, secure a pin to the lathe somewhere so it'll drop into my index holes. Okay, I've added increments on here. Uh, on the hundred side, I've got it divided into uh, tens and fives. The reds are the tens, and the five is between. Uh, when I say that, I mean uh, ten holes and five holes. Uh, that's so. About the only thing I'll use the hundred for is making lathe dials, uh, and I need it for every ten and, and fives for increments. Uh, these right here. I divided uh, the, the red as thirds, divides the, the disc into thirds, and the black divides it into quarters, and the long black, I made two of them long, divides it in half. So, about that in there, I gotta have some way to index it now. This lathe, and, and all lathes are different, so when you make one of these, you may do it quite a bit different than this, but uh, on a Logan lathe, everything that's gray here is the drive, and it's mounted on rubber grommets, so it moves. So I can't really bolt anything to the gray portion of the lathe because it's separate from the spindle. So what I did, right here, holds this plate on it's ultimately uh, hinges the cover. Uh, took a piece of aluminum I had here, cut out a little clearance there for my back gear, and used this bolt to secure it to the lathe. Put a 3 8 rod here. I built this right here. It's just a 3 8 sleeve with a set screw on it, brass set screw. Uh, I reamed that to 3 8 so it's a good fit on there. Then I ground a, a uh, 1024 bolt with a long taper on it. And after I ground that, I ground the end of it off until it fit snugly in the in the holes that I drilled on my indexing wheel and locked it down in this lever. And uh, the way you use it, you just, pretty obvious probably, but put that on there, line it up with one of the holes, lock that down. Okay, I'm locked into uh, one of the hundred holes move it, you just lift it up, go to the next one, go to the next one. Works pretty good actually. Uh, nice thing about using brass is it doesn't eat into the shaft but it adds friction to it. Uh, paint pen was probably not the best way to mark it but given the amount I use this, it'll sit on the shelf most of the time. And I'll just be careful not to uh, uh, not to rub off the paint. Of course, uh, it also allows me to change change the way I mark the wheel too. I might want to divide it in a different increment. Well, that's it. Uh, I've got to give some credit to Tubal Kane. He's the one that 
showed me uh, in his YouTube videos how to put a saw blade on the end of the spindle and use it to index from and that's what I made this indexing wheel from uh, but be sure and check out Tubal Kane. he's got all kinds of videos uh, I think he's a retired shop teacher but but they're good videos it's helped me a lot over the years uh, here's an example of what he what he's done or what he showed me how to do this is what an indexing wheel can do see there I scribed all those increments using the saw blade to scribe them and punch numbers in there made new dials those dials were almost impossible to read did the same thing on the cross slide uh, got a set screw there got a uh, nylon underneath it I can set the zero works great anyway check out Tubal Kane he's, he's a good one Thanks for joining me.